Code workspaces give you the ability to use third-party IDEs, such as Jupyter Notebooks and RStudio, right in Foundry. This allows you to perform analysis on high-quality data using your favorite tools while maintaining data provenance. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to build a basic analysis using code workspaces. We will be using notional work orders data from our theme park rides to build visualizations showing the distribution of time to completion by ride. Let's get started. Starting from anywhere in Foundry, you'll type Control J and search for Code Workspaces and click on Code Workspaces. From here, you'll click Create New Code Workspace. And note here that you have the option to create a Jupyter Notebook or our studio. Today, we're going to be looking at Jupyter Notebook. So we'll click Select and then Continue. We'll give it a name, save it. And now we have the option to configure advanced settings, such as the compute resources or the time it takes to time out after being idle. We'll click Continue. Now, when you're using code workspaces, all your work is backed by a code repository. Therefore, you'll have the same version control capabilities that you'd have in code repos. So at this point, we are creating and saving the code repository that's going to back our code workspace. It gave me a name by default, and it's saving it in my code folder. So I'll click Continue, and then Create. Now that the workspace has loaded, this might look very familiar to you. In the middle, we have our Jupyter Notebook. On the left side panel, we have the Foundry-specific interactions. On top, we have the option to change branches. And here, we have the option to sync changes to the code. This will initialize a commit to the backing repository. To start, we'll make a new notebook. Give it a name. First thing is we'll need data. To import data, we'll go to the data section here, click add data set, and import an existing data set to use in this workspace. Navigate to your data set and select. At this point, you're gonna give your data set an alias. When you click add data set, assuming you're importing it as a pandas data frame, you'll be given a code snippet that you'll copy and paste into your code and run it to import the data. So we'll hit copy and paste it in the first block. And then to run it, I'll type shift enter. Now that this is run, I can investigate the data by printing it. And I can see indeed that we've imported work orders. Now, in order to do our work, we're going to need two more packages. We're going to need pandas and matplotlib. So I'll paste the code to import them and run it. So next, we're going to paste in the code to make the plot. This code takes the work orders data set, filters it for a single section of the park, selects the X column and the Y column for our box plot, creates the labels for our box plot, and then makes the plot. After running this code, we can see our resulting box plot. So here, we've demonstrated how to run code that produces a plot. Next, we might want to reshape our data and save it as a new data set. Let's say, for example, that I want to save a data set that looks at the average days to complete a work order per ride. So here, I will paste the code to do the aggregation so we're taking the full work orders data set and grouping it by the ride name and the park section and averaging the days to resolution. And this is the resulting table. At this point, I might wanna save it. To produce an output data set, I'll go to this data panel, click add, write data to a new data set. And in this step, I'm actually creating the empty data set and giving it a name. And I'll save it in my data folder and hit save. So just like I did when I was importing a data set, here I'm going to have to give the resulting output an alias. So I'll click add. And now it's going to generate a 
code snippet for me to paste into my code. But in this case, the dataset type should be tabular. So here we have a code snippet that will save the data to our dataset, but we need to specify which Python variable it's going to be getting its data from. In this case, the variable is called dfag. And note that when I wrote that, it updated the code to reference that variable. So now I'll copy that to the clipboard, run it, and I will create the transform that actually builds this data set. Here I can do some additional configuration, such as configure it to be incremental. For now, I'm just going to hit sync and run. And this created the transform to create the data set. And now if I click on view checks, I can see the progress of the checks waiting to run, just like I would if I was running a build from a code repository. Kicking off this transform also had the side effect of syncing my changes by default. But if you did have other changes to sync, for example, I print the aggregated data frame again, you would hit sync changes and then confirm that you're gonna sync the changes and this will initialize a commit to the underlying repository. So now I can see that the build has succeeded for aggregated work orders and I'll click on it and I can see indeed that it has created a data set. And now I'm free to use this data set anywhere else in the platform. That concludes our introduction to code workspaces. We hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future tutorials.